And Daniel wants to discuss how we went from atheist to theist due to the moral argument and the problem of knowledge. You're on AXP with Sophia S. and Johnny P. (laughs) Daniel, tell us more about this, won't you? Yeah, how are you all doing today? Doing great. Very well, thank you. Walk us through the argument if you could. Sure. So... I actually used to watch the show. I know that's not exactly what you asked, but when I was an atheist, I used to watch the atheist experience quite a bit. So it's kind of interesting to be talking to you guys uh, as a theist now, as a Christian. Um, But anyway, to your point, to your question, um, the first big issue that I found within atheism uh, was a moral issue. And what I mean by that is I've always believed that objective moral values and duties actually exist. And what I mean by that is that things like murder and rape, um, these things are actually wrong. Like even if everybody in the world uh, thought that they were fine, you know, like if everybody said, oh, these things are good, they would still be wrong. It's outside of human opinion that moral facts exist. And I've always believed that. Why? And what why do you believe it? I want to. Mm-hmm. Really, it's the why. And I get that you think that they exist. Mm-hmm. I would argue that they're wrong because I don't want to be uh, either of those uh, in my lifetime. But tell us why you yeah. think that is. I think it's just uh, completely intuitive. You know, it's the same reason that I feel like. Uh, I can trust in my senses or that... Okay. Um, if, I'm sorry to interrupt, but if they're intuitive, you know, define murder. Like you said, it's intuitive well, that murder well, is wrong. Intuitive. Yeah, I'm saying it's intuitive that things like murder are actually wrong. Okay, but again, intuitive. like, are you murdering someone if it's in self-defense? Is it murder if it's outlawed by your specific government? Is it murder? Is well, abortion murder? There's so many different sure. ways to define this one word that we're already going to run up against something that shows that it's really hard to make well, an I'm argument not, this is I'm always not, true. I'm not just talking about murder. Of course, but you could say it for anything almost. Moral values and duties. Well, let's let's so stick with murder. We're on to something about? specific and I think we're on to something good. So give us a, so if it's intuitive, what you think it's intuitive because it's objective. Is that is that your argument? It's an objective moral value ar- and we're plugged into that with our intuition? Yeah, my argument is that it's actually wrong to do certain things, you know, like uh, you know, things to a child, for example. Like there are actual things that are actually wrong. I believe that wrongness, like evil, actually exists. You know, like so when Chris Watts did those terrible things to his daughters and put them in an oil drum, like that's actually wrong. Even okay. if some people disagree and say, "Oh, what he did was good," what he did was actually wrong. So I think you know, and oh, sorry, I think that this is a, well, an intuitive, basic thing that is just so obvious to us. We can't, you know, to deny it is absurd. Okay, but. So, so w- what's the difference between those things that we know as intuitively wrong and those things that we feel are wrong because of the consequences of doing them? I'm not sure I understand. Can you well, I mean, I, yeah, I, I can tell you why um, putting children in, well, let's just stick to something simple, killing someone for without outside of self-defense, outside of war. For the fun of it. What's that? For the fun of it, let's just say. Okay. Killing so, someone for the fun of it. Ki- killing without, without any justification, for the fun of it. I shot a man in Reno yep. just to watch him die. <laughs> okay. Sure. Why, why is it, you think that's intuitively wrong because it's an objective moral precept or whatever that it's mm-hmm. wrong? And, and I would argue yeah. it's also wrong because of the consequences that we can't allow people to murder other people for, for no reason because none of us want to live in a world where we are subject to yeah. random killings. And so we structure our society, law enforcement, laws, and other things like you know, concealed carry and things like that. We lock our doors and all that stuff because we don't want it to happen to us, Right. Right. So yeah. you'd have to separate, yeah. I don't want it to happen to me. I don't want mm-hmm. it to happen to my loved ones. 
and then what remains would be maybe something that's objective in some sense. How do you separate? I don't like the consequences from that, you know, that calculus that you've done. Okay, so I don't like the consequences to me, and I think that this is just obvious. What you're talking about, I don't like the consequence. The consequences that is subjective. So some okay, people. So morality yeah. is subjective then. Yeah. What's wrong with that? Right. Yeah. Well, if that's what you're talking about, then that's just opinion, right? I'm saying that it's actually wrong. Like, let's talk about opinion. Moral facts because what you started is, this all off so with. The nature of what subjective is means. that there, that you feel subjective literally that means there anything. is a moral, you know, standard. Why do I care that you feel that way? It makes sense that you would become a theist if that's something you feel is universally true. But you're kind of out here making that, an argument that it's true because thing. you feel it's true and then saying that we're being subjective. So that's a little confusing. Why do I care that right. you feel there's moral absolutes when honestly it can't right. seems like you can make an it doesn't seem like you can make an argument for it outside of it feels okay. self-evident to me. Okay, first of all, there's a difference between why it mattered to me and why I became a theist versus why it's going to matter to you. I don't okay, know well, make the argument that matters to us, matter then. To you. What? Okay, well, I don't know what, what argument is going to matter to you. I'm telling you why it mattered to me, okay, because you asked me why did I become Go ahead, a theist. answer that so question. Fair enough. Why right. I Go became ahead. a theist. Daniel. Sorry. Right. So um, this was very important to me because I think that saying that things like rape and murder, you know, are just opinion like, oh, uh, I don't like that, you know, you I don't like rape and I don't like murder and I don't like genocide. But if you want to do it, go ahead. You know, I don't like pineapple on my pizza, but if you do, you go ahead and put pineapple. OK, on Daniel, you're going to go ahead and get mom. muted because that is such an outrageous mischaracterization <laughs> of our position that it has to be muted. You should feel bad for saying that. That's an objective moral position that I've asserted. Look, we don't say rape and murder are bad because mm -hmm. that's just our little opinion, you know. We, yeah. we feel like it right now. We might change our mind at the end of your call. We might think murder is perfectly fine. Um, that's not what we're saying. What we're saying is that murder and rape are bad things because they have bad consequences and well i'm i'm, I'm speak for myself i won't speak for you <laughs> they have bad consequences they de they deteriorate the well-being of human beings in society they are terrible things you could say that's my like opinion man or i can just point to the victims of those things you know the, the families of the murdered or the raped or whatever it might be right it's not an opinion. There are actual observable consequences for that. And I don't want to live in a society where those things are just willy-nilly allowed, nor does anybody else really in society want to do so. How do I know? Check out the, the penal code in any state, okay? And around the world, it's outlawed. You say it's objective, and I say it's only objective in the sense that it's fairly universal insofar as human beings are have these biological c constants none of us want to be murdered all of us want to continue living so mm -hmm. um it's check yourself daniel when you c say that that's what we're saying i think i would also just real quick yeah. put on to that that you didn't seem to like when i said why does this matter to me and then immediately launched into well, how actually we all either believe or need to believe these things um, or that we're just saying genocide is fine if it's done to someone else. And so it's kind of difficult to not have a, a bit of a dissonance there. You're calling because you feel like it needs to matter to more people than just yourself and then saying that you're just talking about your own personal moral yeah. development. So maybe more I statements will help us get there with you. Yeah. Um, our shared humanity wants to find out w what you think about those responses, Daniel. Okay. So first thing, um, if you're going to make a response, I think it's fair that you say one point at a time and let me respond to one point. Daniel, if you, have a, if you have a problem with the way that we're doing the show, you can just um, call another show. But I will allow you to address our response. And if you don't address our response directly, instead of having a little sidebar, you can uh, shuffle off to Buffalo, Daniel. All right, go ahead. What were you well, saying again? I, I didn't hear you. Okay, what I'm saying is that I think that it's uh, polite to make one point at a time, not three. But Okay, you've made that point. Let's so let me going. address your point. Thank 
Right. So let me address the points as I see them. So you said that uh, rape is bad because there are consequences, right? Um, but when you say that there are consequences, like, are you saying that rape is actually bad or you just don't like it? We're, gay, so we're saying they're basically the same thing. Yeah, it's basically the it's same, not the thing. same thing. It's, it's either thi- objectively bad. The things that we no, no, you say objectively. Bad. Throw away the, the word objectively, okay? We're saying I'm these actions are word. bad because they are horrifying things to do to people because nobody wants it. It's a thing that is considered a crime almost universally around the world Mm -hmm. because we all Mm -hmm. kind of agree, none of us want to be murdered, none of us want to be raped. Right. So you're not going to use the word subjective or objective. Is that correct? I mean, I don't I mean, think is we there have a to, mor- to be is there honest. A moral fact about the case that murder is wrong or like, is there a moral truth about that? Or is this just things that human beings don't like? We just don't think there has to be an overarching moral truth about that. Sorry, not, not to speak too right. much for Johnny either, but we don't think it matters. And I would say, no, I don't think there's an overarching moral truth about that because I don't think there is about anything. I think that I'm a social creature right. who's capable of empathy. And so I don't like when other people are hurt. And like Johnny said, I don't want to be hurt. So... No, I don't think there's an objective moral standard for that, and I don't really feel like I'm missing out on anything there. It's it's a it's a distinction okay. without a purpose. I think mm-hmm. that you can you can spin your wheels about objective and su- subjective morality if you want to, but the fact is is that on the ground the act we're all agreeing that these actions are wrong. Well, obviously not because rapists exist, right? Yeah. Okay. That's right. People can do things they think are wrong yeah. also. That's a that's a thing that happens. I mean, there are lots of people that rape and say that it's perfectly fine. I mean, there are lots of people that commit genocide and say that it's good. We, sure. we know that there are people that make these types of arguments. So not everybody's in, in agreement. And, and and most the of them point. are religious. And, and whether or not whether or not those people believe that rape and murder is an objective uh uh, objective crime or a subjective crime, as you wish to put it, they're still doing it. People still game mm-hmm. the system. Sure. Individuals still game the system. So the, the fact that it may be, there may be objective moral standards or subjective moral standards only, it doesn't really matter. There will be people who commit these acts mm-hmm. independent of it. Well, we're at the point, well, it does we're at the point, Daniel, where we're trying to work together to try to well, we, we work to try to prevent these things from happening, but obviously all of us are kind of on board with rape and murder. There's other things that the humanist community is after that the theist community is not necessarily after. So perhaps yeah, you have another point to make. Go on. Well, the, the argument that I'm making right now mm-hmm. is that God is a necessary precondition. Mm-hmm. In other words, God must uh, exist if moral values and duties objectively exist. And then the second premise is that objective moral values and duties do, in fact, exist. Therefore, God exists. And we, we just say and no objective moral values don't. So, yeah. mm-hmm. ha- cool. I mean, I think that we yeah. fall down on that point and kind of got around it a few times. Yeah. Well, I actually have six syllogisms. For oh, yeah, I bet you do. Uh, the six syllogisms are really dynamite. And um, let's have one syllogism. Okay. Um, one syllogism for why subjective morality is not true. Sure. Yeah, please. Okay. Give me give me one minute. Is that? Uh, actually, I, I don't think we have really a minute. Not sure, okay. what we're supposed to do if we give you yeah. a minute? Right. So if you've got it on hand, great. Just let's have a conversation. Forget about your notes. Forget about your checklist. Forget about your little flowchart. Just have a conversation with us. We don't think that rape and murder are acceptable because we don't like the consequences. I'm speaking for myself, but maybe a little yes. bit. Yeah. We don't like the but consequences. We don't. we don't want to live in a world with it. We don't want our children to grow up in a world with it. We don't want strangers to grow up in a world with it where it happens all the time and it, is, it goes unpunished mm-hmm. because we are humanists. We care about the well-being of others. We care about the well-beings of ourselves. Yeah. Okay? Yes. But those are subjective, arbitrary. Oh, yeah. no. They're subjective and arbitrary. Gee, it sure looks okay. like other people <laughs> in the world agree and disagree on moral standards throughout the world. Matter, Some pl- What's that? Just because other people happen to agree with you doesn't mean you're any more right. And of course you not. That. And we're not arguing that that does. Did we you just really, don't yeah. think so we need an objective standard. Actually get you Did you actually think that I was making a mass consensus yeah. argument? Uh, 
Daniel honestly He's done it about three times now. Uh, no, I don't think he have. I don't think he no. has. And the reason why I would He's say that is because about three times. He's not trying to say this is the absolute truth. He's saying I believe this, and a lot of other people believe it, and that's how we build a right. society. So is yeah. because we agree with it. He's not saying that that makes it true because we have both kind of said that we we don't really need it to be objectively don't need true. To be true. I feel like there's a disconnect here where you're thinking we need an objective truth and we're saying we don't. And then we kind of keep getting lost in this cycle where you're saying, well, that's not objectively true. And we're sort of saying, okay, sure, yeah, yeah I don't care. Yeah. Daniel, I think you've got some really good syllogisms out there. I'm not sure if they'd be well received by us. Maybe not at this moment. I think yeah. we've, we've had a good conversation where we've at least reached what I think is a bit of an impasse. Um, and yeah. so maybe, you know, call in again next time and give us a syllogism. Yeah. Um, but I would ask you to deal with that question. Like, why do we need an objective truth? And why does it bother you that we're okay without one?